Okay. But we're here to know one thing, that Jesus Christ is the reason we're here. Amen. Amen. That sole purpose we come to worship the true and living Savior this morning. It's such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I, I know that uh, this is our first Sunday and things are going to be a little bit different today than usual. Uh, we have a guest ministry here, a guest speaker. Uh, Ricky Merriman is going to come and and share with us some of their ministry things that they do. And then he's going to preach the word. His daughter, Lauren, is going to come and sing. And we look forward to that. We're just so happy to have you all here with us today. Amen. What a blessing that is. Uh, also, you look at uh, the service today, it tells us about the same thing we always do. Welcome and now I'm just called to worship, time of prayer, prayer for some scripture. We're going to do the offering and the doxology and after the doxology, Ricky's just going to come on. There's no sense in me coming back and, and introducing to you. you. You will recognize him very well. He's only six foot eight. So he will stand above and beyond everyone else. So I think it'll be self explanatory when this strange man comes up here that you haven't seen. I hope you've seen him by now. But anyway, it's just a privilege to have your family here with us and to share with us the ministry. And what little times I've got to speak with this man, it's remarkable. Uh, sometimes we just forget about missions, what missionaries do, and what these jail ministries do. And to hear him talk and hear about him, the passion that comes out of him, and the, the glory that God puts upon him and, and the people who come to Jesus Christ through this, it's just unreal. It just it really gets to you. But it's a real blessing. A couple of announcements I want you to see. Uh, in your bulletin, if you have one, hopefully you do. Wednesday night, another important meeting of the church. We have a gentleman coming uh, at 7 p.m., James Graham. James will be coming to help us with some information. He's not coming to bring anyone to preach for us, anything of that nature. It's to, to kind of let us know the interest in interim pastoring, what it can do for the church, how it can help. I mean, you may not see it that way. That's why we're having this meeting, to have an interim pastor for a while, while we're getting a church a search team organized for the task at hand to go out looking for a pastor for this church. Uh, we're so blessed to have Pastor Kyle, which is a retired minister, and Josh Shiflett, Another pastor that will be coming next Sunday. Pastor Kyle will be here on the 9th, the 16th. Josh Shiflett will be back here. We're so blessed to have these men to come and be with us and, and try to keep us going in the right direction. The following two weeks will be two of our deacons will be speaking. Doug will be speaking on the 23rd of September. And Brandon Flasco will be speaking on the 30th of December. There, I mean, January. I'm back in Christmas time again. But see, that's me. Thank y'all. Thank y'all to realize how young I am. Um, but anyway, we know it's January, right? New Year, right? Okay. Um, hope of Appalachia, of course, that's always in here. I hope you pay attention to that. It's uh, spon This month they're sponsoring a collection for the kindergarten bags for Perry Elementary and Ebarts Elementary. And you can read that. Uh, something else I wanted to say, but I don't forgot that, so it must not have been important. Uh, it's always a whole lot going on. The one thing I did want to say, I know what it was now. Wednesday night, Bible study. And you know, this week we do have James coming, but let me tell you something about Bible study. It's time for the church to come together and not only... It's praying time. It's a time to learn. It's a time to fellowship with your brothers and sisters and say, that's when we just sit down and kind of be able to talk. I mean, what we've been doing in Bible study has been a blessing to my heart because there's a lot of questions and, and, and things are being, going on. It opens up. I mean, there's people sitting here that I, I really just, uh, I thank you so much for attending Wednesday night Bible study. 
and for sitting there and, and asking questions. That's what we're to do. If we're going to learn together and pray together and stand together. That's what it takes, a knowledge and a wisdom of the Word of God. And I appreciate that so much for the ones that do show up. I just want to tell you that. I thank you so much because that's something that we kind of come, I think every church comes short when it comes to your, you look at Sunday crowd and then you look at Wednesday, there's a big, huge difference. But anyway, it's not about the size of the crowd, it's the size of your heart and what you want in your heart. Do you want Jesus Christ? Do you want to have the knowledge of the word of God? And uh, hopefully you do. Hopefully you, you, have, you want that time just to be together to pray and to pray for this church and for what's, what's going on in our church right now. All right. Right now, I'm going to have, uh, I guess we're going to have Wilbur and have a call to worship. And after Wilbur comes, Brother Bill Clinic is coming to read the scripture today. Well, actually, before we uh, sing a hymn, uh, I do have an announcement. Under, in my role as finance council leader, we have envelopes out there uh, on the um, kiosk. Uh, if you need a uh, report at the end of next year for this tax year, you need to be using envelopes because envelopes are the way we know to keep individual track of your giving. So they're out there. If you need, need them, pick them up. Okay, so let's uh, turn to uh, hymn number 453, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. One other announcement which Wayne forgot was that there's a plate on the back for a love offering for the, for the ministry that we're getting to hear about today. So if you would please use that for the blessing of God's work. Prayer request. Are there any other prayer requests that aren't on our list that we need to put on there? Okay. Yes. My dad and his wife both have COVID. So okay. A 
Okay, anybody else? Okay. Well, come, I put, join me in prayer as we get, get into the issues that we have. Father, I thank you for giving us health to be here and giving us strength and health so that we can come and worship here today. But that, Father, there are others that can't. Uh, some of them have health issues and are trying to recover from things, and I pray that you would give them the strength and help the, the medical profession do what they can to get them back to where they need to be. We have many on our list that don't know you, that, that need to come to know you, and I, Father, I pray that we pray that you would just bring somebody alongside them and help them to gently see the love that you have for them and help them to start thinking about that and make decisions. It's too late once they're gone. So Father, I just pray that you would bring the right people beside them that can help them understand your love and understand what you did so that we could have eternal life if we choose to get it, receive it. And we have many people, like say, that, are, that have health issues, and I just pray that you'd help them to recover. And if it's, if it's your time for them, I pray that you'd help them prepare and be ready. Be ready to go home and help us to let them go. Help us to let them to have, so you could have them home and we could rejoice to be with them in eternity. Uh, Father, we're, we're at a new chapter for this church where we've got to find another pastor to lead and do the leading that we need. And Father, I just pray that you to help us to, to know clearly what your objective for this church is. I know we're involved in many areas. We're involved here in Rutgersville, in Charlottesville, in Kentucky, and we support missions in many places. But if there's some area that we're having not where we ought to be, help us to see that. So as we try to find people to lead us and shepherd us, that we find people that have the right feelings and the right concerns so that as a church, we're doing what we ought to be doing here in Rutgersville. Uh, thank you for the many blessings you give us and help us to use our time and resources to the work you're calling us to do. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray that we can be your servants in all that we do. We have a scripture reading for today. It's in first, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. And uh, if we can stand for that, it says we honor God's word. And so this is Second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us the very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Thank you for reading God's word. We will take the offering up now.
something that none of us could ever achieve by our own merit, by our own works. Father, again, we just want to say how grateful we are and help us to turn the world off and open our hearts and receive the message that you will send to us today through your saints. And we have it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
time, but you, you can't find anybody lost because everybody thinks they're a bride. It has to be a time and place when we are lost for the Lord's sake. Yeah.
Um, okay, I'm on. Um, yeah, last night, I, th I thought about that. You know, God's been good to, to his people. God's good to us. And you know, if we're not careful, uh, you think that, you know, we're saved and, you know, us four and no more. But it's, it's a world out there that's dying and going to hell. Yeah. And yeah. we have the answers. And maybe somebody here today that's never been saved. Well, I thought of that young girl last night. Her name was Carly. Um, uh, we uh, was up there. In the, we had the men's service. Had, had uh, about 20, 30 men come out. And three of them asked the Lord to save them. Had, had a big time. Then the officers took, took them back and brought the ladies back in. Had about 10 ladies in there. But the one lady uh, that, that got saved, uh, she was knelt there in the front and asked the Lord to save her. And when she, she went back, you know, everybody else was praying. Nobody saw what was going on but me and the Lord and her. And, you know, the Bible says you, if you're saved, you're not going to be ashamed of it. And so I said, has anybody got a word of testimony? And before, I'm, I'm looking for her to answer. Someone else spoke. Uh, it was a couple months prior to that. Me and my wife was out there and... Um, I, th I think, uh, Brother Carol, you've seen the one girl. She's, so she's two of them in there that was uh, uh, pregnant, getting ready to have babies in prison, in jail. And uh, here, here, here they are in jail. And, um, but that one track you'll find out in, in the back, uh, uh, my, um, God's Perfect Timing, my wife wrote it, uh, but it's about us uh, losing three children. But she gave that gospel track. And she was confused, and she was, she was searching. And my wife told her, just you know, read it. We don't have to be here when you get saved. And she testified that that night she went back and read it, and she said, it's the Lord's Savior. So that place was just, it was just getting on. I'm, I'm telling you, if that don't, ex don't excite you, I don't know what will. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's all we got. Hey, that, that, that's the best thing we got. And hey, thank God for that. And... Um, and so we was rejoicing with her over the, her salvation. Then the other lady, she, uh, she raised her hand. She wanted to testify. And she, was, she was there crying. And, and she said her dad, before she, she was uh, taken to jail, her dad told her, she said, she said uh, uh, Honey, I, <clears throat> our whole family is, is, nothing, is in nothing but trouble and turmoil. Somebody's got to break that chain. And he's not even talking as a, as a, as a saved man. He's talking about a lost man looking for some kind of a glimpse of hope. And, and she said that, and she said the night, she said, I found out what could break that chain. And that was the Lord. And she asked the Lord to save her. But she's getting ready to go home this week. So remember, put her in your prayer list. And um, hey, but we, that's the kind of God we got. And that's the kind of hope that we have. And that's the end result that you want to see. Um, our ministry is back here on the table. Some of you already seen it. And uh, uh, the tracks, uh, Brother Frank, he comes over and helps us print some. Uh, but we, we have a children's track that goes to the Philippines and actually penetrates into the public schools. And, and we're excited about that. Uh, that is, it's the gospel message, getting into the, the hands of children. And, you know, we see the end result. You know, that the one jail we was at last night is not a maximum security, so they will get out. Uh, but I have been in places like Angola where... 80% of the men will live, die, and the bodies won't even be brought out of, that, uh, out of the yard there in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I was back here in 2000. And, uh, but the bodies won't even come out of there. But you know that they can die and that body be buried there or cremated or whatever, but that souls will spend eternity somewhere. Amen. And just, just as, as sure as you're sitting here this morning, uh, your soul uh, is going to be determined by what, what you do with Jesus. Has there ever been a time and a place when you trusted the Lord your Savior? Uh, and the, the, the salvation is a thing that you can know. And, and John, the Bible says, these things I've written that you may know that you have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. A salvation is not, a, it's not something that you work up or you're good enough to get there. The Bible says there's none good. No, not one. Hey, for all sin comes short of the glory of God. Uh, it's too often I hear people say, you know what? I'm glad you go to those jails and prisons. And I said, hey, they need it. Said, well, guess what? You need it too. Hey, well, we all need to be saved. And, and I'm afraid that, uh, that when we get to heaven, uh, we're going to be very uh, uh, surprised at the people that we don't see there. And we're going to be surprised at who is there. And, 
And the Bible says, uh, you know, you got to work that out with fear and trembling. And uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But, but our, our ministry uh, is back here on the table. But we're a help ministry. So uh, we, we will print the gospel tracts, and we actually will send them to other missionaries and be a help to them. Uh, we got a military track in the back. Uh, that is going to a missionary in, the, um, in Spain, and Brother Don Drake, and he's a missionary to the military of America. And that track is going to be sent to him. And we got a homeless track back here in the back. Uh, that goes to Brother Dennis uh, Mitchell, a uh, missionary to the homeless of America. And, you know, the Bible says this, God's not willing that any should perish. So, I mean, you gotta, you got to reach out to anybody and everybody. And everybody's a, a, a candidate to be saved. And uh, to, uh, we shouldn't look down the nose on anybody. And, uh, but if we ought to look at them and uh, that our eyes uh, ought to affect our heart. Uh, when we see somebody, that's a soul. And everybody that you and I would come in contact with uh, is a prime candidate to get saved. And a gospel track is, is a good way to reach them. I like where um, Oliver B. Green used to say about a gospel track. He said a gospel track will track you. And, and that, the gospel message is what he's referring to. That, that will prick the heart of that person. And what I like about gospel tracks is that everyone is, every track is unique. And everyone we have back there is a, is a time and a place where God has allowed us to be a witness to somebody and God show up in, in, in the way he does and shows off and, 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 and saves somebody. And uh, so every track, we, have, we got one back there, it's uh, I got a, a deer head on it, a big mount. I call that my redneck track. Uh, but you know, a, a deer hunter will not turn that down. Uh, he'll take that track. When, when, when you hand him a track that says God's looking for a sinner, he might not have nothing to do with that one. But he'll take that deer head and that track and read it. And, and we got a lot of feedback on that from uh, wild game feasts and different things across the country. And a, a lot of people got saved on that. But, you know, that, that, that track, I really didn't want to write that track because at one time uh, that really consumed my life. Uh, so when I gave that to the Lord, uh, the Lord wanted me to uh, head up a, a prison ministry up in LaRay, Virginia, and, and it was on a Saturday. And when the guy offered that to me, I'm thinking, Saturday, hold on now. That's going to be hitting on my hunting day on a Saturday. And the Holy Spirit of God, and I said, well, I'm going to pray about it. You know, what I was saying is I'm going to think about that. I don't know if I want to do that or not. That's going to be getting in on my time. So I went home, and the Holy Spirit of God said, you mean you can't give me one Saturday a month, just one? Of course, you know who won that argument is the Lord. And, but you know, that, that jail has been a very fruitful place. So when the Lord uh, uh, put on my heart to write that track, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, God gave me a verse where Apostle Paul said, I made all things to all men that by all means may save some. So it's, it's the same message, but you're speaking to somebody down on their level. You're not speaking over their head. You're not looking, speaking down on them, but you're speaking to them. And our children's track, you'll notice, uh, you'll see an English version out there, but we do have it. When we send it to the Philippines, it's actually in the Goglet dialect, and that's their dialect. And uh, even though they can speak English, it's personal. And when they say their own language, even a, even a Spanish person uh, that lives in America, um, if you give them an English track, uh, they'll take it and be respectful to you. But when you hand them a Spanish track, they know that you, you're specifically reaching them, and they'll appreciate that. And, uh, and, and we got to uh, reach people that way, and God got to honor that. And so we have a, we're working on almost a million tracks that we sent into the Philippines, which is not a, a big number for a ministry, but we are missionaries on, on deputation. So we're, we're getting the job done still, trying to raise up support, and we're about... At 30% of our support right now. So be praying for us. Uh, you know, we appreciate you considering to taking us on. You know, just prayerfully consider that and see what God will have you to do. Uh, but our, our, you know, we sent them out, uh, our tracks to the, to the missionaries, uh, no strings attached to them. Even to the Philippines, we'll send it door to door to the nationals, which is a very uh, big thing. They don't have to travel anywhere. So we'll, we'll, we'll pay for it to get to the port. And uh, then, then we have someone that delivers it right to their door. It takes a lot of uh, traveling out for them, and it's real hard to, to travel in the Philippines unless you're rich. And, um, but be praying for that. 
and uh, Lauren's got some tapes out there too if you like that good singing. And uh, I, I like I like I like the Bible. I like the Word of God. I like the preaching. But you know that uh, that singing, that, that those spiritual songs. You know, it's whatever you put in here is going to end up down here. You got to have some good spiritual songs, and there's some out there on the table. And um, there, uh, I think she's got fifteen dollars on them. But the Lord lays that on your heart. But if you got if you got your Bible, we're going to be in the Book of Esther. But thank you all for having us in here. Uh, but I'm 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 just excited about what God did with that young lady's heart last night. And um, but you know the uh, being a witness for the Lord is being uh, you know God knows where you at at, at all times. Uh, he knows where you're at. He knows where you're going to be where, before you even know where you're going to be at. Uh, I remember I was up in Northern Virginia, uh, Book of Esther, chap, uh, chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 5. I was up in Northern Virginia one day, and I was backing up a truck. Um, and I was up there doing some work, backing up a tra- truck, and the Holy Spirit of God says, uh, give that man a trap. Well, I was going to come right back up there tomorrow. And so I said, Lord, I'll give him one tomorrow. I'll, I'll take some time. I'll witness to him tomorrow. And the Holy Spirit of God says, I want you to give it to him now. I mean, it was just on my heart. And so I just backed on up, and I was just talking to my Holy Spirit that lives inside of you and me that is believers. And I just couldn't put it off. You know, they didn't stop the traffic, and I'm backing up. And I, I just couldn't take it no more. I, I pulled back in. You know, you know how they are friendly up there in Northern Virginia, they beat the horn and wave at you. And uh, so he looks at me like, are you crazy? I just went on a limb, stopped the traffic, and you pull him back up in. And, and the Lord says, I want you to give him a track now. And I remember I went over there, and I said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy. I said, but the Lord told me to give this to you. And he looked at it, he said, he said, the Lord was just speaking in my heart, but I need to get my family in church. He's like, hey, the Holy Spirit is that real. And, you know, the, the key to it is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. And, and the only way you're going to be that, to be that is, uh, number one, you've got to be saved. You've got to be sensitive to the calling of the Holy Spirit of God. You know, the Bible says that, that none can come to me except for the God which have sent them drawn. And I will raise them up at the last day. And the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, do you have a time and a place when the Lord spoke to your heart about your salvation? And the book of Esther, I, I like Esther. And uh, uh, the Bible says in, in verse 5, let's pray. Lord, thank you for being so good to us. God, I pray that you just, uh, uh, get this message off my heart, Lord, uh, to the people, Lord, to their hearts. I pray that it'll have a lodging place, God, in their hearts. God, uh, God, thank you for being a good God, a holy God, a righteous God. God, we pray, Lord, for somebody here this morning, Lord, that don't know you as Lord and Savior, God, that you would reveal that to them today and they'll get saved. God, we'll thank you for it and give you the honor and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Esther, uh, in verse 5, and when, when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small. You know, I thought about that uh, great and small. And as nobody's going to escape uh, the wrath of God if they die in their sins. You know, the, uh, I may mention of it earlier, the Bible talks about uh, Jesus said, uh, and there's so much confusion about being saved. And God didn't mean it that way. God never meant uh, to, to be real hard to get saved. You know, the Bible talks about even as a child, can, you have to come, as an adult, we have to come to Christ as, as a child. Uh, we have to have that childlike faith, like, God, whatever I need to do to get saved, I'll do it. I tell you, I remember the night that I got saved when the Holy Spirit of God pricked my heart. I was sitting back, not too far from here. I was over at uh, Oak Park Road Baptist Church. and um, Actually, you mentioned the guy's name that... that um, I, don't, I think he got saved over there too, Brother Josh. But I, I remember that one night I was sitting in the back of Oak Park Road Baptist Church. And I was invited there by my brother and my sister. And uh, I heard the word of God that night. And I didn't come to get saved. That's how much we have to do about salvation. Uh, yeah, it's, it's God's mercy and God's grace. And I heard the, the warning from the preacher 
That if I didn't get saved, I was going to die and go to hell. I mean, that's what saved means. It means saved from what? The wrath of God. And that's the reason you get saved. You get born into the family of God. Because of the sin of Adam's and Eve's in the, in, the, in the Garden of Eden, their sin of disobedience, that passed down from generation to generation. And, and so sin entered into the world. And that's the reason that you and I, uh, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, He said, when He came to Jesus by night, He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And that night in, in that church, I heard the gospel message. And I remember I was sitting down in there. I'm telling you, I had my hands crossed like somehow or another that I, I'm not going to accept anything that's coming from that pulpit. I'm, I'm not going to accept anything. And I remember, uh, I didn't see it, but it was somebody sitting down beside me, and his name was Mr. Holy Spirit of God. And I remember I was sitting down there in that, in that pew and I had my arms crossed and and there, that preacher was preaching on hell, and he was over there in Revelation, and um, talking about the, the small, dead, small and great, stand before God. You know, the, uh, we're going to stand before God one day and, and give an account what we, what we did with the gospel message. Hey, the gospel message is so, is so wonderful, it, but it costs God so much. Hey, God's, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That night uh, that I had my hands crossed, and uh, I remember my brother and my sister was there. They invited me, and, uh, and uh, I tell everybody they aggravated me to church because they knew I needed to get saved. They had a burden for my soul. And, and until you get a burden for your family members or you even get a burden for your own soul, I, 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 it's, it, nothing's going to happen through you or to you. That night, I, I, I waved at him. You know, I said, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I'm here, and this is going to be it. Well, needless, needless to say, the Holy Spirit of God didn't leave me alone. Every time that preacher would preach, that Holy Spirit of God would bear witness with my spirit that I was not a child of God. And, 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 and what the thing that changed during that service was I started agreeing with him. I said, you know what? You're right. I, I'm lost. And, and, and once I said I was lost, I fell under the Holy Ghost conviction. And, and I'm saying, you know what? This is the most miserable thing to ever feel is conviction. I remember the brother was telling me about him get, getting saved. And that conviction, hey, will make you feel bad. And you know what? You'll, you'll, be, you'll be sorry for the sin that Christ had to die and go to that cross for. Hey, but uh, that preacher went all through that message and uh, here I am, I'm, I'm grieved in my spirit uh, uh, under conviction. But at the end of that service, he gave an invitation. And he explained what that invitation was. He said, listen, if you want to get saved tonight, hey, come down this aisle and, and call on God while he's near you know, salvation uh, is a time and a place. Hey, I didn't wake up saved. You didn't wake up saved. Hey, it has to be a time and a place when the Holy Spirit of God pricks your heart. Here, here was Esther. Uh, here she was brought in to save her whole, whole, whole people, all of her people. And, and, and God set her up for, for the kingdom. But now I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is a picture and a type and a shadow of what Christ did for you and I. Right. Hey, Christ, uh, he, he, he bore those sins at Calvary. He, he, he bore your sins and my sins, but not only ours, but the sins of the whole world at Calvary. And that old, you know how the story goes, that old, that old wicked Haman, uh, he, he planned a, a gallows uh, to kill old Haman. Hey, that's a picture and a shadow and a type what what the devil thought he had our Savior whipped at Calvary. He thought that was it, and that Jesus was gone. That's, that's it. We went and got rid of him once and for all. And, and, and they tried to put some guards around that tomb, and, and they, they said, you know, listen, he's a deceiver. Hey, put some people there and watch and make sure Jesus, hey, hey, nobody takes his body and steals it away and tell everybody that he resurrected from the dead. And they put the guards there. But that, can't, that couldn't hold our Savior down. Yeah. Hey, they rolled back that, 
that that old the, the big old stone from the tomb, and there and, and there he is. It, it's empty. It's, he can't kill the resurrection. Hey, he, he's a living God. Yeah. Hey, every time he went to a funeral, everybody got up and walked away. But that's the kind of the savior that, that's there. Hey, the, he he went through everything for you and I, so that we wouldn't have to die and go to a devil's hell. Hey, that night I remember I started. That spirit started bearing witness with my spirit that I was not a child of God. I, hey, I got lost. And I, I tell you, it, it did a lot of people to get lost. A, a time and a place when you got saved. And, and I, I tell you, what I like about the jails and the prison is, is, is they don't have nothing. And, and I'm afraid in America, we, we, we're so privileged. We got so much. You know, I think of all these missionaries that we, we sent to the Philippines and... and uh, uh, with the last load we sent over, we sent over um, half the boxes we sent it, filled it full of rice, and half half the other boxes we we put in the the word of God, the, the tracks. And what they do is take that rice and compel people to come in because they're hungry, they're hungry, and then, and they need something to eat. And then when they come in to get something to eat, he gives them the bread of life. He, and people get saved. And that, that shouldn't sound strange. Jesus did it himself. He fed the thousands, the multitudes. But he gave them, he gave them the gospel message and he got saved. Hey, I, what I'm trying to say to you, we need to get hungry. Hey, people are dying and going to hell. And we think just somehow or another, you know what? It's my family. I love them. They, they're going to go to heaven. Well, that, that, that's for them to decide. Hey, they have to give the account for their own soul. Hey, I, I can save... I can save myself through the blood of Jesus. Ask Jesus to save me. But I can't save my daughters. Hey, I can pray for them. Hey, hey but you and I, we need to get a burden for people. Uh, we, we need to see them and that if they don't get saved, they're going to die and go to a devil's hell. Hey, salvation is a time and a place where you repent and call on God while he's near. Hey, that night, that young lady saw herself lost. And she knew it's, those words ring out in her mind. You know, my whole family is damned to hell. And my father even knows that. He says, something's got to change, young lady. Something's got to change. And the Holy Spirit of God told her last night, he said, this is what it got to change. Hey, you got to become a new creature. Hey, you can turn over a new leaf all you want. Hey, this new year, turn it over. You know what you're going to find? It's going to be dirty on the other side. Hey, there's none righteous, no, not one. Hey, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And hey, we need to get regenerated. We don't need, hey, hey nothing wrong with saying, no, I'm going to do this or do that, but I'm going to tell you what we need to do. We need to have some burden for some people that are lost and, and see them for what they are. Hey, salvation means that you're saved from the wrath of God. Can you imagine at the great white throne judgment, all those are already in hell. The Bible says that God's going to bring them that are up in hell for the last time to be judged. And the, the, and the judge, God Almighty, and there's going to be a long line of people being judged. And you and I that are saved, whoever is saved in here, I don't know your heart and you don't know mine, but us that are saved, we're going to be the great cloud of witnessing and we're going to be witnessing the last and final judgment. And when, that, when those sinners come up in front of God, hey, they're going to be confessing with their mouth the Lord Jesus, but it won't be no salvation at the great white throne judgment, only judgment. And God's going to bring down the gavel and he's going to say guilty. And they're going to bound them up and cast them into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. And those folks up in the jail last night, hey, they're going to get out sooner or later. But in hell, it's forever and ever and ever. We need to see people for what they are. They've got a soul that's going to live forever and ever and ever somewhere. And if we don't give them the gospel, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, how are they going to hear I've seen them up there before, and, and, and you tell them why you're there. You know, my name's Brother Ricky. I'll come up here to give you the gospel message. And one night I heard it, and I got saved, and I want to see you get saved. I seen a man up there one night just shake his head like, you're crazy. And you know, I mean, you have people look at you, you just, they ain't saying nothing, but you know what they're thinking. But during that night, the Holy Spirit of God started um, dealing with this heart. And he said, leave them alone. The Lord said, leave them alone. Just preach them the gospel. Give them the gospel. And that night, I gave the invitation, and lo and behold, he came down and got saved. That is how powerful the, the news that we got. It works. It gets your job done. But you and I, at that great white throne judgment, if we die in our sins, 
Well, you're not going to see whether you're going to make it or not. I can tell you, you're not going to make it. For the wages of sin is death. And the only way you're going to get saved is down here on earth. And if you wait and you try to, to, to do more good works and, and try to get there, that's not going to happen. Not of works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. What was mercy? Mercy was the night that He saved me. I didn't even come in there to get saved. I just come in there to be seen. But the Holy Spirit of God pricked my heart and drew me, and I responded in the right way. I came down that aisle, and I, and I got down on my knees, and, and I humbled myself. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 34, The Lord is nigh to them that have a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Hey, what's a contrite spirit? It's humility. A humble spirit. Realize, say, Lord, I ain't nothing but you everything, God. I don't know how, I can't get there on my own, God, but you can get me there. And putting your faith and trust in the finished works at Calvary. And that's salvation. But one day, if you're saying, you know what, I'm saved and I can't, and, and, and that's all I'm worried about, it. one day you're going to be worried about it. One day you're going to be weeping and crying at the great white throne judgment when they bring your loved ones down in front of you and you see them judged for the last time and bound and cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. And I, now, I often say in that great line there of people being judged for the last time, they're going to look up at you and me that know us and maybe it might be our neighbor or co-worker or, or friends or nieces or aunts or uncles, family members. They're going to say, hey, Ricky, why didn't you tell me about, about the Lord? Hey, why didn't you witness to me? Why didn't you invite me to church? Why didn't you give me a track? Hey, why didn't you tell me about Jesus? And they're going to bring up accusations to us, and, and I'm afraid to say that I'm going to be a part of that. And, and you can't do too much for the Lord. Yeah. And the Bible says that God's going to have to wipe away the tears from our eyes. People that we know that's going to bring up those accusations upon us. And you know what? The lives going to be right. They're going to be right. And we're going to be crying. And God's going to have to wipe away the tears from our eyes, the Bible says in Revelation. Wipe away the tears. And I'm afraid that God's going to have to also wipe away our memory that they even existed. Hey, what kind of Christians are we? God's got to do that to us. Hey, people are dying and going to hell. We've got to get a burden for them. People, hey, we, people need to get saved. Hey, just because you're here this morning in the church, you can come here every morning until Jesus comes back. Don't make you saved. Hey, a salvation is a time and a place where you humble your heart and call on God for salvation. Hey, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, that's anybody. Hey, here, here it is. The, the Bible says great and small. It don't matter. Hey, if you're a child and know that you're a sinner and you know you need a, a Savior, hey, whatever that age that... It's no set age, but it's a, it's a time of accountability. When you realize that you're a sinner, you need to get saved. And I, I've seen children get saved. I've seen people 90 some years old get saved. Hey, but it's a whole lot better when you get saved the young as possible and so you can serve the Lord and, and see other people get saved. Hey, maybe you hear this morning and say, Brother Ricky, I'd, I've never been saved before. And uh, I tell you, there, there's a hell to shun. Uh, there's a time and a place where uh, you have to give account for it. You know, the Bible says in Revelation, and, and, I, and I saw the great, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to the works. Hey, I saw the small and great stand before God. I will tell you, God is no respecter of persons. If you know that you're a sinner and you die in your sins, for the wages of sin is death. And there's only one place for you to go, and there's a hell. As much as we like to, to, to say that God is love, He is love. But I'm going to tell you one thing, He's a God of wrath too. He's not going to let you get to heaven hey, by walking over the blood of Jesus. And Jesus said this, He said, this is the work of God, that you believe on Him whom you have sent. If you never believed on Jesus, you cannot finish, you cannot, you cannot enter into the works of Jesus. When Jesus was on that cross, when He said it was finished, a hey, salvation was paid for full and free. But Jesus also says this. He says, this is the work of God that you believe on Him whom you have sent. And when you and I believe on Jesus, we enter in by faith and not by sight. Hey, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
Let me ask you something this morning. Do you know the Lord's your Savior? Has the Holy Spirit of God pricked your heart and, and draw you to Him this morning? Maybe in here say, Brother Ricky, I know I'm lost this morning. I need to get saved. We're going to, uh, if it's all right, we're going, we're going to give an invitation. You know, it's never a bad time to get saved. You know, the Bible talks about salvation. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Not yeah. tomorrow. You know why? The Holy Spirit might not be drawing you tomorrow. When you realize you're lost, you need to get saved. I don't care who's looking at me. I'm going to tell you, that night, I, I, I think I crawled most of the way up to the altar. I was way in the back. But I'm going to tell you, I won't go to hell for nobody. And I'm going to tell you, once you heard the clear gospel presentation and the Holy Spirit of God has pricked you in your heart, and I'm going to tell you, it, it, it ain't no left behind. That's a lie straight out of hell. I'm going to tell you, if you're left behind, you've been pricked in the heart by the sweet Holy Spirit of God, you're responsible for the blood of Jesus. And, you can, and the Bible says that God will send a strong delusion and you'll and you be damned to hell and you'll never get saved. And that's, that's what I, I say about that movie. And, uh, but that's what the Bible says about it. Hey, God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. We're going to give an invitation. Now, if you lost this morning, you've never been saved, hey, you come on down to this altar and, and you take care of business with God. Hey, behold, today is the day of salvation. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for all that you've done. God, thank you, thank you for this time, Lord. God, as the uh, pianist comes, and, and uh, pianist, could you, player, could you come and play something, please? And, uh, and as we're praying, hey, maybe say, Brother Ricky, nobody look around and say, Brother Ricky, I've been pricked in the heart this morning. I know I'm lost. I've never been saved. Would you just pray for me? Hey, nobody's looking around, just me and God. If that's you this morning, say, so Brother Ricky, would you just pray for me? Hey, I promise you, I won't come to you. I won't call you out. If that's you, I'll just pray for you. Anybody like that in here this morning? I've never been saved, but I, I see that hand. I see that hand. You can put that down. I see that hand. Anybody else? I'm going to tell you, before you can get saved, you've got to realize you're lost. That's a good place to get. I'm going to pray for you like I said. Lord, thank you for the hand that went up, God. We want to Praise you for that. God, thank you for the honesty. God, uh, I pray you just uh, deal with his heart, Lord. Keep dealing with him and, and draw him to salvation knowledge. Uh, nobody looking around me. Let me say that young person that raised your hand. If you want to get saved, the, the altar is open. You come on into this altar and, uh, at, and uh, we'll, we'll take a Bible at the end, end of the service and, and lead you to the Lord. I'm going to tell you, um, who can say, Brother Ricky, I know I'm saved. I had that time and I had that place. And I just want to raise my hand and just thank God. Amen. All right, I see those hands. Amen. Amen. Hands everywhere. Amen. I, you know what? I, I, you can put them down. I've seen some hands and I've seen some hands not raised. And, you know, uh, n neither one of that offends me. Because sometimes, you know, the Bible says you've got to work it out. Uh, but I tell you, don't wait too long to get saved. You know, salvation... It's a time and a place. And, and this could be your time, your place. And um, so you just make sure you get that taken care of this morning. Um, hey, I, I thank God. You can look up here. Um, hey, hey thank, thank God for uh, uh, y'all allowing us to come by this morning and sharing the ministry and giving you the word from the Lord. But I, I don't want you to leave here um, in the same way you came. I was at church not too long ago, and um, a lady in the back, uh, during the invitation, uh, she raised her hand, she was lost. And uh, I'm talking about conviction. And uh, she's sitting back there weeping. And I gave invitation, invitation, I just knew, I said, you know what, she's going to come forward and get this, this lady's going to get saved. But she never did move. And at the end of the service, she came up to me and she said, uh, Brother Ricky, that really spoke to my heart. And I said, well, why didn't you get saved? She said, well, pray for me. And so we got to get back over in that church again. And sure enough, there she was again. And we gave an invitation, and she admitted she was lost again. And during the invitation, she got up and went right out the back door and didn't see her no more. Uh, you, know that, you know what happens? Uh, when the Holy Spirit of God pricks your heart and shows you the need to be saved, and you keep on putting it off, your heart gets harder and harder. And it gets callous. It's just like when you're working, your, your hands get callous. And you know, you, once you get a blister there, next thing you know, it's just so tough. Don't get no more blisters. 
That's how your heart gets. You hear the word of God. But I tell you, it needs to fall on that good ground. And if it don't fall on that good ground, it, it, it don't do no good. And I'm going to tell you, you can die and go to hell right off the church pew if you're not careful. And that's sad. And uh, here you are. You, you come and you make an attempt to do what's right. Uh, but uh, but you, you, can't, you can't muster up uh, being saved. It has to be the Holy Spirit of God and you yielding to it and, and to get saved. And I tell you, the best thing ever happened to me is when I got saved. And, um, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do this. We're all going to stand and we're going to give one more invitation. And may, may, who knows? Uh, may, maybe it's the last time you get. You never know. It could be your last time. You could go out them doors and go down 29, and, and and someone could come across that double line and hit your head on. You said, "Brother Rick, that's kind of scary." I'm just telling you how real hell is, and how every decision you make can affect your eternity where you will spend that. And salvation uh, is that serious? Behold, today. And that graveyard is full of young people and old people, great and small people. And uh, nobody, uh, you're not promised another tomorrow, the Bible says. Hey, behold today. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you. Hey, I, I'm telling you, uh, we're, uh, you need to deal with it. just need to deal with it. We're going to pray one more time, and the altar is going to be open. And you let God be true. Let God be true and speak to your heart and be honest with him. Lord, thank you for being so good to us, Lord, as the altars is open, Lord. We pray for anybody here that, that don't know you, God, as Lord and Savior, God, that they've come forward, God, and, and have his way. Uh, and Lord, make your way up here and sing something real quiet. Make your way up and just play something. Sing a, sing a song. And um, I, I, I just feel impressed to do that. And... Um, I tell you, I'm, I'm glad that night, Lord, that you saved me. You had, you had, a, uh, had people that had a burden for my soul, God. Hey, maybe somebody's on your heart this morning that you know is lost, and you want to find your way up to this altar and just pray for them, that God would prick that heart. Hey, man, maybe that's you this morning. I tell you, we, we, and the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray. You know, uh, this altar... Up here, this is not a stairway to get up here on this platform. That's holy ground. That's a place where we corporately worship the Lord and come and come forward. And uh, I, I, hey, maybe God spoke to your heart this morning just about the message. Maybe you're saved, but it's somebody you want to pray for. Hey, that that soul that you've got a burden for. Hey, hey maybe you need to ask God. Say, Lord. Uh, well, give me an opportunity to reach that person and, and, and to be that light, God, that they need to see. I tell you, everybody that is saved can tell you, you know what? I had a grandma that prayed for me. I heard that this morning from the brother. Hey, somebody said, well, maybe I had a grandpa that prayed for me. Maybe I need to start praying for some of my kin people. I'm going to tell you, hell is that real. You go One day you're going to wish you had prayed for them. Hey, this altar will keep your heart humble. And, and, and God can speak to a humble heart. Maybe your heart is so hard. You say, Brother Rick, I don't know if there's any hope for me. I tell you, you got ears. The Bible says, let them hear. You got ears. Hey, hey ask God to, to help you. Miss Lisa. Miss Lisa. Miss Lisa. Talk, just talk to him. Maybe somebody is on your heart this morning. Hey, hey, maybe you. Maybe you. Hey, listen. says if my people which are called by my name humble themselves. Now, you know, we like to look on the news and say, you know what? 
I see the problem. It's those people in the streets burning down the places and robbing and looting. But God don't say that. God says it's my people. You know, we don't like that finger be pointed at us, but uh, the church is falling. When you see the world going, going crazy and hate wire, that's because the church ain't humble. And the church ain't seeking God's face. If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, hey, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their lands. Hey, you want your lands to be healed? Hey, humble yourself. Hey, too much pride. America, American dream is nothing but pride. And we ate up with it. We need to humble ourselves. People die and go to hell. Number one reason, because of pride. Pride would get you. Pride goes before fall. All right. Well, thank you all for being patient with us this morning. And, and uh, uh, I still have water, so I guess I can preach for three more. No, I'm just kidding. I thank you all for half this in. But I, I tell you, it's nothing. You're bragging on the Lord. I tell you, I got something in me that, that uh, is worth telling. You know, Amen. if you ain't got nothing in you worth telling, something's wrong with you. Amen. And you got to get it in you so you come out of you. Hey, this world needs it. People are dying and going to hell. And if you don't care, something's wrong. Something's wrong. It ain't them, it's you. It's us. God's people. All righty, well, um, I'm going to pray and we'll dismiss you. Thank you all for having us. Lord, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you uh, for the kind of people here having us in, Lord. I pray that you bless this church. I pray that you give them wisdom and understanding. I pray that you give them an under-shepherd, God, that will lead their people in the right direction. God, who will see souls saved and hear great things of the church in, in, in the near future, Lord. I pray that you bless. Give them wisdom, and, wisdom, Lord, and discernment on what, what pastor to have, God, here. I pray that you give them that discernment. And we'll thank you for it and give you honor and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.